Hello. Continuing our work with applications of the Moivre's theorem, we can be asked to find the roots of complex equations. There is more than one way to solve this type of problem, but we are going to look at uh, this way for now. So we have z cubed is equal to minus 27. Find the values of z or solve this equation. You could also be given this equation. This is mathematically identical, but looks a little bit different z cubed plus 27 is equal to zero, and you could be asked to solve that. So in either case, we are going to get the z cubed by itself, and now we're going to try and cast this as a, a, a polar form. So at the moment, it's in rectangular form. We've gone minus 27 on the real axis, and we have gone zero on the imaginary axis. Uh, so we are going to rewrite this in polar form and then use the Moivre's theorem uh, to find our possible solutions. And this is almost identical uh, in logic to uh, how we would work out the general solution of trigonometric uh, equations or trigonometric functions. So this is the general solutions to trigonometric functions. This is very similar to, I'll write that in for you now. So very similar to ooh, general solutions to ooh, trigonometric equations. Uh, now, Let's get into solving this question in terms of the Moivre's theorem. So first job is I need to draw z cubed to see exactly what I am dealing with. So I draw in my unit circle, where's minus 27. It's going to be over here, down at minus 27, the e, uh, negative real axis. So this is the angle I need. And very easily I can see that my modulus is just 27, because I'm not going off on a triangle, I am literally just going along my axis, and I've gone minus 27 away from my origin, so my modulus is just 27. This is why drawing the picture is so valuable, because if we got that in the exam and we tried to fall back on just finding, drawing our model triangle and so on, it could get us very confused, whereas if we draw our pictures, life is easy. Uh, so I can see immediately this logically that my modulus has to be 27 because it's my distance from the origin and then my argument again i can see directly from my picture uh, in this case i'm going to write it in terms of radians i can see that theta my argument just has to be pi radians if you were working in degrees which would also be perfectly fine uh, you would uh, have 180 degrees because we're going from the positive to the negative real axis so that's my uh, modulus and argument written so now I'm able to write z cubed using the Moivre's theorem. I have my or my radius or my, so that could also be written as my radius. Um, this is 27 cos of pi plus i sine of pi. Now, here's our bit that very explicitly links into the general solution of trig equations. To get the solutions we need, we are going to um, have to write this in general polar form, very similar to what we would have done with our trig equations. So general form reminding ourselves we're at this number here to get general form. Technically, this complex number isn't just uh, written like this in polar form as a technicality if we did a complete rotation if we added two pi radians we would come back to the exact same point if we added another complete rotation so we'd gone four pi uh, radians around we would also end up back at the same point so if we add on 360 degrees or two pi radians onto our rotation we come back to the exact same point every single time so the most general version of z cubed is this number, but we add any number of complete rotations we like onto it. And this is called its general form. And this is going to allow us now to solve and find our uh, roots for our equation. Cos pi plus any number of complete rotations, because again, if we start here, this is our number, rotate around through two pi radians, we come back to the same point. So we'd end up with exactly the same number.
So this is it in general form. We must do this now. And then the next step we're going to do is take the cube root of both sides. Which you can think of as taking to the power of a third, or you can write in cube root. It is perfectly fine, whichever one you are comfortable with. So that's going to leave me with uh, just Z. The solutions I'm looking for is going to be now I can use the Moivre's theorem from page 20 in my log tables. So page 20 in the log tables allows me to say that the power goes on the radius or the modulus, and then I'm going to get a third of my angles or multiply my angle by a third. Again, this is purely applying the Moivre's theorem. Is that all my brackets closed? And another one out there. Okay. So now this is the most general form of uh, my Z, of my solutions that I'm looking for, my numbers Z. So let's start to play this through and see what solutions we get. Just like when we were doing the general solution for our trig equations, our values for n are going to start off at zero. So when we haven't rotated at all, uh, and then we are going to start adding them up. But to just make what happens here a touch clearer, I'm actually going to multiply in this bracket. So uh, 27 to the power of a third is just three cos of pi over three, uh, which is 60 degrees if we're thinking in degrees, and all over three, plus i sine all over three, plus two pi n all over three. Now, the purpose of this is to try and make what's going to happen now a little bit clearer when we start to sub in values for n. So I have my uh, obvious solution. What would have happened if I uh, just got the cube root here without turning it into a general solution. I'm going to end up with an n is zero. This extra bit that I've added on is not going to be relevant. And I'll end up with z is equal to three on cos of pi over three plus all of this is just zero. So I sine of pi over three plus zero. I end up with 3 on cos of pi over 3 is half plus root 3 over 2 i. So that is my first number. So multiplying that in, I'll have 3 over 2 plus 3 root 3 all over 2 i. That's my first solution. Uh, my second solution, I'm now going to set uh, n equal to 1. And I have to think for a moment, how many solutions should I get? I have a cubic equation. How many solutions should I get? I should get three of them. Cubic equation should have uh, three roots or three solutions. A quadratic should have two. Uh, a quartic should have four, and so on. So I'm going to uh, sub these in and come back to you. Now I have subbed in my values, n is zero, n is one, n is two, and I have gotten out my three solutions. But pretend that I forget this, or I'm just curious, what happens if I put in n is three? What happens if I try and find another solution? Is the equation just going to break? What should happen? Can we visualize in our heads what should happen? Well, I'm going to try that now and come back to you. What happens when n is 3? When I do that substitution, exactly the same way as I've done the other ones, what can I see happens here? I have 3 divided by 3 will be 1. So I have cos of pi all over 3 plus 2 pi, a complete rotation. So where have I come back to? I can see that if I sub in n is equal to 3, I just end up going back to exactly where I started. 
So I have gone back to, I have to change that because I made it a slip there, but um, I have gone back to exactly the same number. And if I put in n is four, I would end up with minus three again. N is five, I would end up back here again. N is six, I would come back to where I started again. So I'm rotating around. And if I think about it, it makes perfect sense that I am. Because what did I do when I had my general solution? I had, I was adding on complete rotations of two pi n. And then when I got the third root, I ended up dividing that by three. So I start out with my pi over three, and I'm rotating through a third of a complete rotation, or 120 degrees if you want to think about it in those ways. I'm rotating through 120 degrees, or a third of a rotation, each time I increment uh, the value of n. So I can actually draw that to see what's going on. If I draw my circle here, I start out with uh, 3 over 2 plus. So that is at an angle of about 60 degrees, so we're somewhere around there. That's my first solution. And what I do is I rotate around a third of the way around my circle, and I come around to my minus 3, my second solution. And then I rotate around through a third of a circle. That should be about 30 degrees. And I come around to my third solution. I rotate around again through a third of a circle. And then here, by getting my value for n is 3, my fourth solution, I'm just rotating around through a third of a circle again and ending up back where I started. So this is how our uh, De Moivre's theorem is giving us our different solutions. So by writing it in general form, we are then able to rotate around through thirds or quarters, whatever we need for the question of our circle, to find all of our possible solutions. And after a particular point, we're just going to end up repeating ourselves. So I'm actually going to write these numbers in for you. So these are our different uh, solutions that, that we can get. And any time we increment n any higher than that, we're just going to end up overlapping. We're going to end up hitting those same three points over and over again as we increase n. So that's why we only end up with three solutions, because all of our solutions after that are just repetitions of stuff we already got. So we don't need to bother continuing. But if we run into this and we forget how many solutions our cubic should have in the exam, we won't run into any problems. We'll just start to find that we're repeating solutions and we'll know to stop. But in general, we know that a quadratic equation will have two roots, a cubic equation will tend to have three roots, and a quartic equation will tend to have four roots. And 